Well, secret cellar, moped lair. Uh, raining today, so we're going to play with these guys. Batteries. That should be fun. Keep me out of trouble. Oh, yeah. Gloves? Mm hmm. Gotta wear gloves. Because uh, some of that acid gets on you. Uh, you're going to know it. And uh, safety glasses. Because uh, whatever is left of my vision, kind of want to keep it. So, these guys here, these came from uh, from old uh, uh, um, emergency lights. Picked them up at a, at a farm auction. Picked up three lights. One was busted to heck. And uh, two were good, but needed new batteries. So, I said, well, first thing we're going to try to do is we're going to try to service the old batteries. Um, so to service seal batteries, step number one, because they're so-called sealed, is uh, we've got to open them up. And uh, to open these guys up, uh, all you have to do is, you'll see the outline of, uh, of uh, where these tops go on. And underneath the plastic top are the three caps for the three cells. Yeah, six volts, two volts per cell. That's the way uh, most batteries work. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna open one up because uh, nine times out of ten, the reason why these batteries are weak is because uh, while it's doing the charging cycle over and over and over again in those emergency lights, it slowly evaporates the fluid. So as long as it's got a little bit of charge in there, uh, you should be able to top it up and uh, and uh, put some charge in there and it'll hold it. So uh, that's what we plan on doing. So. In order to get one of these batteries open, uh, what you have to do is you have to take a your box cutter knife, and uh, you'll notice that there, right around the top here, there's a seam, and you got to run your knife uh, across that seam a number of times, cutting into it. Try not to cut the heck out of your hand and slip off the edge because it's pretty close to the edge. And uh, what you have to do is you have to basically uh, uh, just. Oh, that was close. <laughs> Basically, run your knife maybe three or four times down the seam, just because uh, that's how they close them. They just glue them down, and uh, then just start prying around the edge. And uh, there we go. She's starting to go. Be careful with these snap-off blades. You don't end up just snapping off the blade and have the blade rattling around under there and give you something else to do. There we go. That's the lid off of one. And you see on the battery, it's just little rubber caps. Same thing like the old school batteries used to have. You see, uh, you'll notice too, uh, I don't know how well this camera will pick that up, but each one of those is dimpled in. Usually they're flat across. So you know that it's purged out a lot of gas and not sucked anything in. That's what makes these things uh, uh, maintenance free or spill free, but. Uh, but also that's uh, that's where you can just top them up with some uh, some acid and uh, and they should be good as new. So yeah, we'll just uh, pop off these little guys here. One, two, three. You do a nice little suction noise when you're popping them off, so you know that they're uh, they're depleted. Of fluid. Uh, you don't want to tilt it too far, just in case uh, someone's still home. Um, you take your flashlight, and you look down in them, and you'll see on the inside the top of the plates. If there's no liquid on top of the plates, that means it requires some. Best way uh, I found to uh, fill them is uh, one of these. That's a uh, an infant oral syringe. Uh, you get that at the drugstore uh, uh, baby section, or, or just ask the pharmacist for one, and uh, just uh, get some more battery juice and uh, just top little buggers up. Uh, best source supply for uh, for battery juice is uh, is uh, that old battery that's been sitting around in the corner of the garage or whatever the heck, and uh, and. Uh, might not hold a good charge for the winter, so, but you just keep it kicking around anyway, and uh, so that's the guy we're going to be refilling uh, these little guys from. So 
So we're going to use this guy to transfer some of the acid from the big old battery into the little battery. Now, if you find that trying to stick that in there, you're not able to drop any fluid because it just doesn't go in deep enough, depending on the size of the opening. All you can do is just uh, get a little piece of tubing and uh, add it on so that uh, this little guy here is uh, is going to reach all the way in and, uh, and extract some fluid. Uh, you shouldn't need very much uh, to top this guy up. If you find out that you're that you're almost filling it, uh, it's obviously kaput. Uh, but then you wouldn't have gotten any charge. Uh, you wouldn't get, have gotten any voltage uh, when you checked it with your voltmeter. So that's what we're going to be doing next. Just suck up some of the some of the battery juice. And uh, and introduce it into the new battery. It uh, yes, it can get messy. There we go. When you uh, when you draw up some of the juice, a uh, good idea. If you want your syringe to last a while, is uh, make sure that there's a a little pocket of air in between the rubber and, and the battery acid. And the battery acid being corrosive, it, uh, that syringe is only good for one use. Uh, otherwise, if you uh, if you let uh, too much acid get to it. So after all you're screwing around, you want to put your lids back on your battery. And I uh, just use paper towel because it's disposable enough. And uh, clean up any uh, any bit of spillage that you have uh, on the battery, around the battery. Um, paper towel works good because it, it, it'll wick up uh, any of that acid. Uh, Notice that it doesn't instantly eat the uh, the paper, yeah. Like it would if you were watching a, a movie or something, and they show you things burning in acid. But uh, sulfuric acid in a battery, and uh, you spill some on you, you won't feel it. You might not feel it at first, but it'll creep up on you. Uh, so you want to be very very careful with that. So you just wipe up anything that is or could be battery acid because you don't want doggo to step on it or something or the kidlets to to get on their hands or go walking through it okay so you want to put the little caps back on before you do anything else so that uh, you don't have any uh, accidental spillage happening just pop them on They'll, uh, they'll seal tight enough. <laughs> this will be ready to charge now. The best way to, to charge them if you don't have a charger with the right uh, uh, voltage. Uh, these guys are 6 volt um, and only 4.2 amp hours. Uh, I'm going to be using those uh, 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 for, for the Hondas. Um, so uh, in order to charge them I don't have a charger. Um, so at, uh, at, the, uh, at a yard sale, uh, I got a, a nice transformer, and everyone seems to be dumping those things for like 25 cents or something, and uh, looking on the back there, and it says it's a uh, uh, 6 volts DC, 6 volts output, and it's uh, uh, 500 milliamps. Uh, that's uh, 0.5 amps, so that's uh, that's got quite a bit of a, a, a kick to it. Um, I'd only put that on here for maybe two hours, uh, maximum, and then check for a charge. Uh, 
if they don't charge up fully uh, once I get it on the bike and, and the bike runs uh, the regulator will uh, will make sure that I don't blow them up um, basically just cut the plug off the end and uh, use your voltmeter across the two wires find out which is positive which is negative uh, put some terminals on it or some alligator clips uh, stick it on there plug it into charge and away you go